In this assignment, we're gonna explore the process of building patterns. What are different ways that we can build patterns which can be very, very useful in design in all different contexts. Patterns are really powerful tools and we wanna look at some different ways that we can make those. There is a template for this project. It's in Adobe Illustrator. It's provided for you on the learning management system and I have it open here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a save as. And now we're ready to start building patterns. So you'll notice there's six artboards or pages in this file, and each one will be for a different pattern. But you're only creating three patterns in total, and each one needs to be in color and in black and white. So there's kind of a relationship where maybe the color one goes here and the black and white one goes here. However you want to set that up, but you're only creating three patterns in total. So let's look at some different ways to create patterns. There's a lot of different ways. One way you can do it is with just using that transform again feature. So you can make an object of some kind that you want to repeat. So maybe I'm gonna do a really simple one here. Maybe it's some kind of a star and you can go through some kind of a transform. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a copy. I'm holding down option and sliding it over using shift. And then I can come up to object, do transform again, command D, and I can start building a pattern. Then maybe I wanna select all of this and group it together and do another copy down below. I'm holding shift again. You could also not hold shift and maybe have them offset if that was something that you were interested in. This is another thing that you could do. Interesting, easy way to build a pattern. Maybe here I have it in black and white, and then maybe I wanna create a color version so I could take this and slide it over. It feels a little big, so I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit altogether, but I wanna make sure it fits in that square. So maybe it's something like that. Then I can do a mask. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the back. I'm gonna select the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and go to edit, copy, and then edit, paste in front. Just to be extra, extra careful, I'm gonna go ahead and do object, arrange, bring to front, and I'll select the frame and the pattern, and I'll do command seven for mask, and that will mask it inside. So then I can always take this, I can copy, I can click down on this artboard, do a paste in front, and I can click inside of this and I could actually just very quickly change the color of the pattern. It might be fun to have more than one color on this. Maybe some stars are one color, some stars are another. But for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna do something a little bit more quickly. So all I did here is I clicked inside of that mask and I just changed the overall color of that pattern. So it was a very simplistic way to do this. That's something that sometimes is what you need. Sometimes you just need a quick way to create a pattern and it's something really simple and that can be the most effective. Obviously this could be more complex, right? Maybe I had two scales of stars happening or maybe I use different shapes and line them up and repeat them. So you can use this technique to make things more complicated, but there is a limit to really what it can do. Another way to build patterns, which is slightly similar to this, is using the repeat function, but using the grid. So I'm gonna go ahead and use an ellipse in this case. I'm gonna make this out of lines. So I'm gonna go ahead, bring the stroke up. Then I'm gonna make some other circles. So I'm gonna do a edit, copy, paste in front. I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. Move the stroke up and then I'll do one more. Maybe this time I'll actually do a solid circle in the middle, sort of like a bullseye. So maybe it's something like that. You can select this shape and you can actually come into object, repeat, grid. And what's interesting is it will actually allow you to repeat this object and grid it out. So these larger bars on the left and right are gonna allow me to determine how big the pattern is. I can also change the scale of it here. So it's really about how much area does it take up if you use these larger poles. The smaller pole is just gonna determine the scale. What also is interesting about this is you can also control how close together these are. So there are these other functions here where you can see that I can actually make them start crashing up against each other and you can move these to determine how spaced out you want those to be. So again, depending on the complexity of the pattern that you want to build, this can be another good strategy to use. And then what I can do is I can do the same thing. I could actually, in this case, just make it the size of the box if I wanted to do that, or I could mask it either way. I'll go ahead and do it this way since I showed masking on the last one. So I'm just gonna bring this in. And I'll bring this side in as well, and that'll start to create that pattern that floods this entire page. Then I could copy and paste this up to the top. Select this artboard, do a paste in front. 
if you select in here and get it all, you can change the color. Obviously you should zoom in. I'm not zooming in and doing a good job of making sure it takes up the entire part of this. But again, if you click in here, I need to change it twice. There's this fill and a stroke here, which makes it a little bit more complicated. So I'm just gonna change the fill first, make that black. Then I'll come in and I'll select the two strokes. So I'll select this, I'll make this black. And then I'll select the other one finally to make this black as well. So by changing just one of them in the pattern, and it can be any of them, you can easily change the color, which can help here. The last way to make patterns is probably the most robust and in some ways the best way to build a pattern because it's going to actually create a pattern swatch. There's actually swatches over here which we've looked at in the past and you can actually build pattern swatches. So there's some that I had preloaded in here already. What's interesting about these is you can fill an area with an actual pattern and it will do it for you. You can't use these defaults for this assignment obviously but we can create a swatch, which oftentimes is one of the best ways to make a pattern. But again, it just depends on what you're doing. If you're not using the pattern in more than one place, if it's not something that's gonna repeat in a document and you're just creating a one-off or something, these techniques can be really useful and sometimes more quick. But let's look at how we can create a simple pattern using this more advanced tool. So I'm gonna create a cluster of shapes in this case. I'm gonna create some different shapes. Again, for the sake of this demo, I'm gonna keep things a little bit more simple, but hopefully you'll be able to see the potential of the complexity on this. I'm gonna hold down Command so I can create a little bit of a rounded star here that brings up those nodes if they're not appearing. And I'm gonna create some circles around this. Select both, move those down. Try to get them at the edges. Maybe I want to have one up here too. Maybe it's kind of a radial situation. So once you sort of have something that looks how you want it, I want to clean this up a tiny bit. Then you can really start to play with the repeat. And what's really great about this one is it works really well with illustration. So if you're ever trying to create a more illustrated pattern, this is gonna be a really good technique to use. These are used really frequently in branding. You've probably seen patterns like this. But now I'm gonna select all this, I'm gonna group it together, and I'm gonna to go to Object, Pattern, and then I'm gonna do Make. And you'll notice immediately, it's starting to create a pattern for us. It's also warning us that it's been added to the swatch palette, which is great, and we can keep editing it over here. So then you get this option where you can change all kinds of things. So I can make it a grid or I can have it be a brick row. Here I can also change the offset if it's a brick by row. So I can change sort of where the offset lives. So there's a lot of functionality in this actual menu. I can go to a brick by column. Again, I can change the offset here. I can also go to a hex by columns. This is gonna create ones that are a little bit more seamed. You're not gonna see those rows as much because it's not rows or columns. It's really made out of these kind of hex shapes that repeat. Then you can also do hex by row. So for me on this pattern, I feel like the hex by row is working the best right now. You can also play with the overlap. So that's something that you can play with here, depending if you need to do that. This is really gonna determine how it layers. So it's not so much about how much it overlaps. It's more about which side of it overlaps on the other. Cause sometimes you want you know, one side, like the left side to overlap on the right or vice versa. You can determine how many copies there are, which can be really interesting. That's just gonna change the size of it, which doesn't really matter that much. And then also you can play with how dim it is. Sometimes this is helpful if you're working with a really complicated pattern and you're trying to look at what you're doing, dimming it can help you sort of see what you're looking at. But the other thing I love about this tool is that you can also come up here and click this button and it will actually allow you to start messing with this. So I can actually come in here now and change this shape and it will change the way that it repeats. If I hold down option, it will do it from both sides. So that's a really handy one for this tool, but I can get it a little bit more spaced out, which I think in this case is more of what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get it where I want it, where those dots are sort of radiating instead of looking like they're crashing into each other. Whoops. So I don't know, maybe that's sort of what I want. Maybe that's what I'm really looking for. So once you have that finished, you can close this menu and you'll notice that it saved what I did over here. Now what's interesting about this tool is then you can just create a shape. So I'm gonna click done. 
you can create a shape, which we've already done for you, and you can just click on the pattern and it will fill it inside of there. So that's really handy, but I'm like, hmm, this isn't really working, it's too big. I'm gonna double click on this and I can edit it again. Then I can come in here and start thinking about how do I wanna make that smaller? Well, the easiest way will be to select the original piece here. I can select this entire thing and shrink this down. It'll mess up a little bit of what I'm doing, so I'll need to come in and play with what's happening here. One way to do that will be to actually change the bounding box like we looked at before. So I can come in here and click this button, which will allow me to mess with this again. If I hold down shift and change it all together, it'll move those closer together, which is more what my intention was. So sometimes you need to come in and mess with the pattern. Also, you can just judge it while you're looking at it. Does that look correct? So I don't know, I, I really like that one. I think it's working. I'm gonna click done up here. And look, it automatically changed it for me. So that's a great way to create patterns. Again, if you're creating something really illustrative, it can be really useful. And then I can come down here as well and fill this one and it'll be identical. The one thing that we're gonna have to do though to change the color is actually come in and change the swatch. Because if you look and I change the color, it doesn't really work. It'll just change the fill. So I actually need to come back to this one, but I don't wanna change this or else it's gonna change both. So what I need to do is actually come in here and duplicate this. So I'm gonna click plus and it will create a new pattern for me that's identical. So now I can make sure that this one is tagged with that swatch, but this one I wanna tag with this new swatch. And if I double click on this pattern, I can come in like I did before and I can change the color of the actual pattern in here. And then it will actually be reflected in the pattern and it'll be easy to apply the color version to the other area where I'm not using black and white. So maybe here I wanna have two different colors. Maybe it's something like that. And then again, I can click done. And now we have a colored swatch as well that we can use there. So I can even switch between them, right? Really easy now. Another interesting thing is if you don't have anything selected and you make a new shape and you have the fill that you want selected, so here I'm gonna use the color pattern, it will actually just create the pattern within the shape that I create. So this is kind of a handy tool. Again, very useful if you're gonna use a lot of patterns in a lot of places, if potentially you're gonna be having you know, lots and lots of patterns in one document and they're gonna repeat. Making a swatch can be a really good thing to do because it can keep things where they are, it can keep things consistent and the pattern will always be the same. Once you have these done, you can go ahead and save the file, save it as a PDF so that you can upload it for grading and review. So come in here to change to PDF. Here we wanna use all artboards. I'm gonna click save and then we'll use the Illustrator default. As always, you can write your instructor if you have any questions at all. They're here to help you. And I hope you have fun with this. Patterns can be really fun to build. I did some pretty simple ones here, but you could really push to do things that are more complex. I challenge you to definitely explore the pattern tool, but it could also be good to explore that repeat tool as well as that transform again function. So have fun with it, explore different ways to do it, and good luck to you on this assignment.